Hi everyone, welcome back to Talks in Class. I'm Jenna, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everyone had a fabulous week. If you're watching on video, don't mind my weird puffy eye. I don't know what happened. I like irritated it somehow, I think, by scratching it. But anyway, I have this big weird bag under my eye. But I'm fine, I just look a little weird. It's been a good week. I feel like we're finally getting into a groove now that we've been in our new place for about three weeks. And we're pretty much done unpacking. So I'm just feeling a little bit more settled. So I'm able to focus on my daily routine and my kind of usual stuff instead of, you know, digging through boxes and trying to figure out where I put that thing or this thing or whatever. I'm also just loving being able to go outside and take a walk or bring Daisy to the dog park in the middle of the day in January without having to put on several layers of clothing and a scarf and gloves and boots. It's very nice. <laughs> the weather definitely impacts my mood in a really big way. Um, I think some people are more impacted than others, and I'm definitely one of those people who's, who's impacted. So it's just nice to be able to go outside and get fresh air every single day. That's huge for me. So as always, I will begin by giving you my what good happened for the week. This week has just felt like a really normal but productive week, which is a nice feeling after almost two months really of being kind of unsettled. So that was good. But also this past Saturday, my husband and I went to the Stranger Things interactive experience in L.A., based on the show Stranger Things, the Netflix show. It's this interactive experience where they take you through like a pretend experiment in Hawkins Lab, which they actually have set up to look like places in Hawkins Lab that we've seen on the show and then into the upside down. It was very elaborate and you go through as a group and it's all led by actors who are pretending to be these characters in the story as if you're really in Hawkins. And what I thought was really cool about it, I had no idea what to expect because they don't allow any photo or video to be taken during the actual experience while you're inside. So, you know, it's not blasted all over social media. And I literally had no idea what to expect when we got there. All I knew was that it had something to do with Stranger Things and like literally that was it. So that was really Cool. I think that adds kind of to it because we didn't know what to expect. And we we're standing there looking at each other like, you know, we're, we're in a group with other people with strangers that we didn't know. And we're kind of all looking at each other like, what's going on? But it was fun. It was very well done. I even got hubs on board with wearing little 80s inspired outfits. <laughs> so we had a really good time with that. We know I love a good throwback inspired outfit. Speaking of throwback inspired outfits... This week, I want to continue the conversation from last week about 2000s and I guess also 2010s styles, fashion styles coming back with such full force <laughs> lately, which we've all noticed by this point. People ask me all the time, like which trends I'm excited to see or which ex trends I'm excited to wear or will I wear again and which trends I never want to see again. <laughs> And I have a lot of thoughts on this. So this week, I'm going to cover basically a list of trends that I think could make a resurgence and tell you which ones I would be down to try again and which ones I will politely decline <laughs> should they show up in stores once again. Like I mentioned last week, there are a ton of micro trends happening right now and they're pulling inspiration from a lot of different time periods. There's a lot of mid 90s cuts on things like pants and shirts. There's a lot of Y2K patterns and color palettes. We're seeing 2010s neons. There's micro trends happening like 90s preppy. There's McBling tracksuits. I mean, it's all over the place. So I'm gonna break this list down kind of by style era slash aesthetic, just to keep my thoughts a little bit more organized. <laughs> I'm sticking just to the 2000s and the late 90s for the purpose of this episode. The 2010s is a whole different, whole different animal. And don't get me wrong, there's plenty of 2010s styles showing up in stores, but I think 
that could be a conversation for another time. Maybe it will be for a conversation for another time. But for today, late 90s through the 2000s. We're going to start with the good old 90s. At this point, I think we can probably all agree that 90s fashion has honestly just gotten to the point where it just looks like normal current fashion. I don't look at those styles anymore and think that is so 90s. And this happens with fashion trends. I mean, the same thing happened in the 2000s with the 70s and the 2010s with the 80s and so on and so on. I really like 90s fashion in general. I will say that. Or I guess I should say I like the present day interpretation of 90s style. I liked 90s style when it happened too, but I, I enjoy the styles that I'm seeing now. I'm on board with a lot of it. And now that we're a few years in, I have had a chance to experiment with a lot of it, even the, the things that I didn't initially think I would jump on board with. I am actually very on board with the wider leg, more relaxed pant fits. Not saying that I don't still enjoy a, a more fitted jean once in a while, but honestly, I was pleasantly surprised, very pleasantly surprised when I put on a pair of wide leg jeans for the first time. They're so comfy, you guys. And after, I mean, what, a decade of wearing jeggings, which were basically spandex disguised as jeans, comfort's nice, you know what I mean? And they look cute. I think they can look cute and put together when styled not like a teenager. I will say that. Even if you're in your 30s, there's a way to wear them where you won't look like a teenager. I also love combat boots. Combat boots and Chelsea boots are probably my, arguably my favorite, like very 90s trend that has become extremely mainstream in the past few years. I just think they're comfortable, they're versatile. I love them. I also really love the return of this kind of Ralph Lauren-esque preppy vibe that we've seen. It kind of reminds me of Gossip Girl in some of the styles and the color palettes for sure, but it definitely leans very, very 90s. Things like plaid skirts, classic white and button down shirts, a lot of cable knits, and just this color palette of like burgundy and hunter green and like dark plaids. It's very Rachel Green meets Upper East Side rich grandmother, and I just love it. I feel like actually most of the 90s revival trends when I think about it are very specifically mid 90s. A lot of the things that I see, like a lot of the dominating uh, silhouettes, fabrics, cuts, and things like that that I see in a lot of the clothes just scream 1995, 1996 to me. So I was eight in 1995. I was way too young to actually wear these styles. I was wearing like Winnie the Pooh crew neck sweatshirts <laughs> with floral patterned jeans and like a starter jacket that pulled over my head with a little McDonald's beanie baby keychain hanging off of the zipper. I did not look cool. It was not cute. I, I just, I wasn't there yet. <laughs> but I was old enough to notice the cool high school kids, like the older kids, or like my babysitters growing up who did wear these styles. And I remember thinking they looked so cool. So I think it makes it especially exciting for me to see these trends come back around because I'm able to now wear these things that I was too young to wear the first time. And I think maybe that's why especially older Gen Z people are excited about bringing back trends like McBling. They probably remember seeing them on older kids and definitely celebrities, but were too young to wear them. So I get it. I feel the same way about the 90s. So all that to say, I'm pretty on board with all of the 90s clothes that have come back. However, some of the accessories really need to be left behind. <laughs> First of all, the tattoo chokers, of all the things that have become like revived in a big way, it's funny what does. The tattoo choker is being one of them that I think is hilarious. It's just a solid no from me. They just remind me of like Girl Scout camp or getting them from vending machines at places like Chuck E. Cheese and they'd come in those like little plastic bubble containers. They weren't particularly cool. It's weird that they've become such a trend. The snap barrettes also 
just stand out in my mind as something that I never want to see again. Do you guys remember these? They, they were like the ones that I would always use to pull my always growing out bangs to the side. And sometimes I would get the cool ones that had like a yin yang or like a flower on them from Claire's, but they would literally snap into place and they hurt. They would hurt your head when they'd snap and they always ripped my hair out. And speaking of hair accessories, those god awful spiky circular headbands that go around your head and then just like dig into your scalp. I'm sorry, but absolutely never again. Honestly, they do look kind of cute. We've all seen that video, probably that viral video of the young girl who just discovered them and asks what time period they were from as if they were some ancient artifact that she found in Indiana Jones's office. It looks kind of cute, but the pain is not worth it. Moving along to Y2K. Y2K fashion is actually very interesting to me. It was a really just interesting time culturally and kind of socially. I look back at the fashions very, very fondly. I was in seventh grade in 1999 to 2000. I definitely was starting to get really into fashion at this time. And this was also a time when I was looking at a lot of celebrities, but a lot of celebrities that were dressing like very over the top. I'm talking like the Lizzie McGuire era, where I was looking at people on TV who were wearing things that <laughs> no one would wear in real life. It was fun. And I look back at it fondly. But the thing that's interesting is the way that Y2K fashion has come back now it feels so campy, very exaggerated. So as much as I do think that it was fun and I'm all about dressing up for maybe like a Y2K theme party, most of the aesthetic in terms of what popular culture has now labeled Y2K are also gonna be a solid no <laughs> from me in terms of actually wearing an everyday life. I will not be wearing shimmery pants or butterfly clips as a 35 year old adult. It's just not gonna happen. I won't be wearing like a rhinestone butterfly tank top. You know what I'm saying? Those, those styles just are not gonna work for me. But there were other Y2K trends in real life, Y2K, the actual year 2000, that were fun and much more friendly for a present day 35 year old. A lot of the Y2K style was really playful and kind of sporty and kind of androgynous in some ways. So there are some yeses from the Y2K era for me. First of all, track pants. I'm talking about those wide leg Delia's or alloy track pants with a stripe down the side, usually in like navy or maybe bright orange. I actually think these are a great thing to bring back and I think they, they can be styled really cute. We're definitely in an athleisure time where athleisure is really trendy. It's very socially acceptable to be rocking your sweatpants outside of the house. I thrifted a pair of blue track pants and they even have the little zipper by the ankle so you could make them slightly flare so they would perfectly fit over your shoe. Oh, that was the best feeling. You guys remember that? I thrifted a pair of these and I think they're so cute with like a basic ribbed tank top or just a white t-shirt and sneakers. And speaking of sneakers, I'm also really down for the casual footwear, which feels very Y2K. Sneakers and platforms in particular, comfortable and cute. What more could you want? I bought the Steve Madden slinky slides, you know, the black chunky sandals that we all had or wanted. I think I had like the Walmart knockoffs back in the day, but I bought the actual Steve Madden ones this past summer. I love them. They're so cute. They go with everything. I think this summer I'm going to get a pair of those Y2K like white platform sneakers. I also loved those. I also had the Walmart knockoffs. I wore them with my overalls and my baby blue t-shirt that had a little silver star on it. I love that outfit. Couldn't tell me nothing in that outfit. <laughs> After Y2K, we got the beautiful, amazing Mick Bling era. Mick Bling is such an interesting thing because in a lot of ways, looking back, it feels like a micro trend that just went a lot more mainstream than maybe it ever should have. <laughs> like it had no business being as popular as it ended up being. I feel like it started with celebrities, obviously like Paris Hilton and Britney Spears. And because of that, teen girls really latched onto it and it just took off in a way that it is kind of crazy when you look at how tacky and ugly 
<laughs> a lot of those trends really were. I mean, look, I loved it, but let's call it like it is. It was it was a tacky time. If you're unfamiliar with McBling, McBling is that magical time <laughs> of the early to mid 2000s where everything was bright, flashy, tacky, like fake looking and yes, covered in various types of bling. In terms of like purely nostalgia, McBling is definitely my favorite era because this was my high school years. I went to high school during the peak of the McBling era. I caught the tail end of Y2K, but really the bulk of my high school experience was definitely McBling. And I was all in on it you guys i loved every second of it every trend of it but as much as i love it it is hard to imagine wearing a lot of it as an actual adult (laughs) now a 35 year old adult but it has been making a huge comeback and i mean i could never turn down a chance to wear a velour tracksuit and a pair of uggs so here's what i'm down to bring back from mcbling Uggs, obviously. I personally never gave up my Uggs. Around 2011, I want to say, the word basic kind of became mainstream and it became synonymous with, you know, Uggs, Starbucks, big sunglasses, a North Face. Uggs were not cool (laughs) anymore, but I still rocked them. I didn't care. I didn't wear them like to class, but I definitely wore them around town like I wore them to Walmart I wore them to walk my dog I didn't care I was I was always on board with the Uggs I don't know they're they're comfy and maybe it's just my millennial brain that's like hardwired (laughs) to think that they're cute because I lived through the era where we honestly thought they were cute with everything denim skirt jeans velour suit like there was no outfit that Uggs did not compliment but I really genuinely honest to god you guys I'm not even lying I don't think they're ugly I kind of think they're cute matching tracksuits especially velour especially in a bright color (laughs) these are popping up everywhere like every store i go into has a velour tracksuit somewhere in it It, it, it's kind of shocking but as much as it does kind of feel like looking at a costume when i see them in stores that hasn't stopped me from buying more than one and yes i do wear them (laughs) the nostalgia factor obviously is just like peak with a velour tracksuit it takes me right back i feel like regina george's mom in a good way next on my list is giant bug eye sunglasses i'm talking the big round ones circle like 2007 think nicole richie or like ashley tisdale in high school musical the tiny sunglasses that have been trending lately are cute don't get me wrong but honestly the bigger the better like i gotta hide these crow's feet this next one might be controversial but french tip nails i know they're making a big comeback lately i'm on board something about a french manicure just makes me feel like on top of the world i think it's left over from my teen years when i would get my paycheck from my mall job or save up enough tips from my waitressing job to go to the mall and get a fresh acrylic set i still remember they cost 38 dollars for a full set of french acrylics it was 38 dollars, which was so much money in 2005 i felt like the queen bee with those nails and i think that that feeling just carries over it's never gonna go away but honestly it, It's like a hot girl manicure. I don't know. It's Carmela Soprano energy. It's giving Jessica Simpson, Britney Spears in the lowest jeans possible on the VMAs. It's just hot girl vibes. Flare jeans. I think this one is really just based on what's most flattering for me personally, but I love a flare. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I held out for an embarrassingly long time with my flares. I don't think I truly truly embrace skinny jeans as in like put away all of my flares and boot cut until late 2010 maybe even 2011. the 2000s had all of these super 70s inspired influences and i just love all of that i've always gravitated towards it the flares the platforms the fur trimmed penny lane coats you guys remember those i love that those are coming back the big plastic aviator sunglasses velour track suits even i mean it's all so 70s and I love it. I'm so happy to see so much of it coming back. Now that we've covered the good from McBling, however, we have to talk about the bad. And there's, I'm sorry, there's a lot of bad. <laughs> Here's what I do not want to see from the McBling era ever again. First, ultra low rise 
anything. We've all heard that they're coming back. We've seen them in stores. We've seen the pictures. I am down for a lower rise, like a mid rise maybe. I get that the ultra high rise are not for everybody. A mid rise is fine. But if we're talking about something that hits below my hip bone, no. It's not functional. I need mobility in my 30s. I cannot be flashing my crack inside Target when I'm bending down to get a $3 dish towel out of the dollar spot. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not practical. Scrunched hair with straight bangs. I have heard whispers that the scrunch may be making a return. I am okay with scrunching if we modernize it. It's convenient. I used to do it a lot in high school out of sheer laziness. I waited until the very last second to wake up for school. I get the utility of it. But we need an upgraded product to be able to do this. The super crunchy, super whole gel or mousse that we used in the 2000s is not gonna cut it. I don't wanna be able to like break my curl in half anymore. If we can upgrade the product, maybe have a nicer texture, I could scrunch again. But for the love of God, I need to know who told us to straighten our gelled bangs and then basically paste them to the sides of our faces so we had crunchy ramen noodle everywhere else and then just like these pin straight fried bangs. If this ever comes back, I'm sorry, I gotta opt out. And last but not least, I don't wanna alarm anyone with this, but I saw a very tiny brown crocheted shrug sweater in a store last weekend and not a thrift store. I just, no. I have been seeing a lot of the Tide ones and those feel a little bit more Y2K or maybe late 90s. Those are not so offensive. They feel like they have a little bit more function because at least they can tie in the front. The ones I'm talking about are the ones that we wore in the 2000s that were like those weird tiny ones that just kind of like went, <laughs> kind of went over our shoulders and then just like dug into your armpits and like sat on your side boob. <laughs> they served no purpose except for to literally like dig into your pits. And they had those horrible cap sleeves that flatter no one. They were usually crocheted or sequined, which hurt even more in the pits. Like you had these sequins like digging into your skin and every time you moved your arm, it was like raw skin against the sequins. Like we cannot go back there. So after the prime McBling era, we had this amazing era of what I like to call boho glam McBling. This was the later 2000s and it was kind of an evolution of McBling. There were still a lot of McBling trends, but they started to look a little bit different. Think Rachel Zoe, Nicole Richie when she had that long bob with the side bangs, the Olsen twins in their NYU era. It was very over accessorized. This was the peak era of the hills. <sighs> Looking back, this time had arguably some of the best styles of the 2000s, but also hands down some of the most cringe, horrific, gut-wrenchingly bad <laughs> outfits I have ever put on my body in my entire 35 years of life. So let's start with the good. First, I am desperately waiting for giant handbags that could double as luggage to come back. I realize that these are absolutely the root of all of my shoulder pain, but also I need to carry an umbrella, a snack, a change of shoes, a water bottle, my makeup bag at all times, a phone charger. Like I have stuff that needs to fit into my bag. These little tiny baby purses that have been trending, these Y2K era like tiny little things that barely fit your iPhone, those do not work for my life. I am starting to see the bags get a little bigger. I'm starting to see like slightly smaller, more updated versions of these types of bags pop up and I'm very excited. Next is the going out top. By now, we've probably all heard this. The going out top has officially made a comeback. Look, I love me a basic piece, but I'm kind of sick of going out and seeing every single person wearing the same plain ribbed bodysuit or like 
plain crop top in black, white, or cream. It's time to put a little pizzazz back into our tops. And I have seen these popping up again. The two variations that I've seen the most recently are satiny fabric tops and baby doll tops. Both were favorites of mine in the mid to late 2000s. And honestly, I think both are very easy to adapt to a more mature wardrobe. They don't look overly young. They're versatile. You can style them in different ways. Day to night, baby. Pop a cardigan over that. We're ready to go. Millennials perfected the day to night looks in the boss babe era of the late 2000s and early 2010s. So we are pros at this. Bring on the going out tops. And lastly, another highly controversial item, the ballet flat. I get it. They're terrible for your feet. Your feet sweat in them. <laughs> your feet stink in them. But whatever. I think that they're cute and they're just easy to throw on with almost anything. I feel like they're a great alternative to a sneaker or a sandal and they just give an outfit a totally different look. Regardless of how you feel about them, they've definitely been showing up in a lot of places. So whether you like them or not, whether you want to embrace them or not, I would say Brace yourself. The ballet flats are coming. I think this era had some of the most hideous trends I have ever seen. And I think at this point, we're at risk of anything and everything coming back. So here are some things that I just want to put on the record now I never want to see again. <laughs> Number one, these super, super long shirts. So the common complaint that I hear now is like, why can't I buy a whole shirt or why is everything cropped? In the late 2000s, we had the exact opposite problem. Every single shirt was like eight inches too long. And as a relatively short, certainly not tall person, this was not for me. Also, our jeans were super, super low. So we just had these long tank tops pulled halfway down our thighs with our ultra low rise jeans digging into us and creating a muffin top that wasn't really there. And it just created the most unflattering look. And then on top of that, we put like three of those tank tops on one another. So it was like these layers of fabric just bulging with the low rise. It was just not good, okay? I don't wanna do it again. The worst were the super long tops that were kind of loose in the middle, but then they had this wide band of tight fabric at the bottom. And that tight band of fabric usually would sit like right on my butt at the widest part of my body. So since this middle was just kind of like this lump of fabric and the tight part was around the widest part of my body, it just made my entire body look wide and like lumpy. I don't know. It, it was bad and I do not want to do it again. Speaking of that look, the thing we added on top of it is another thing I never want to do it again. The chunky plastic giant beaded necklaces. Do you guys remember these? What were we doing? They were like the cheapest plastic and they were in the boldest colors always. Teal or bright red. We usually wore them with like a black outfit as like our pop of color. We looked like we were wearing Halloween costume jewelry to the club. And then we would add a matching pair of chunky plastic earrings in the same color and maybe even a belt. We were very color coordinated. I will give us that. Platform pumps, nothing against a giant heel, but I can't walk in these things. Red bottom peep toe pumps. I would have given anything for a pair of those things in the late 2000s, early 2010s. I thought they were the chicest things on the planet. Now, just looking at those shoes makes my back hurt. So, no thank you. Speaking of bad shoe trends, um, the pointy toe kitten heel <laughs> pumps. Nothing against a pointed toe. Nothing against a kitten heel, even. I think a kitten heel can be cute. But these looked like elf shoes, you guys. The toes were so pointed. They were like six inches longer than any other shoe. And then the little stubby kitten heel. So you just had this like long canoe of a shoe on your foot with the tiny little stump of a heel. <laughs> Who thought that that was flattering? I had like four colors. And last but not least for this era, bubble hems. 
Bubble hems can go straight to hell. I said what I said, never again. And rounding out the 2000s is maybe the tackiest aesthetic of the entire decade, but one that holds a very special place, place in my heart, and that is the late 2000s Jersey Shore era, AKA the Ed Hardy era, AKA full on 80s revival. I don't know about you guys, but when I look back at 2008 to like 2011, literally all I see are the late 80s. I don't know how I didn't realize it at the time, but we were really running around college campuses and like dingy college bars and clubs looking like Peggy Bundy. But really, I did think these outfits were so cute back then. And as hideous as a lot of it was, a lot of it is coming back. And I'm not mad about most of it. Here's what I'd be willing to try again. First off, neons. I wouldn't go as bold in my neon as I did in college. Like I really used to wear head to toe neon, but I could do like a neon tank top with jeans or a neon bag or maybe like neon shoes, a little pop, a little pop of neon. Neon colors are fun and coming off of literally years now of this beige and white and kind of dark 90s color palettes, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the, the brightness to come back. And also they make me look tan, okay? I have believed this firmly since 2008. I will believe it for the rest of my life. Let me have that. Blingy accents on clothes. We loved some bling back in the day, didn't we? I had so many outfits that were just <laughs> covered in sequins and rhinestones and any format of bling when I was in college. Our jeans pockets were blinged out. Our Blackberry cases were blinged out. Our Victoria's Secret fold over waist yoga pants had animal print and neon and bling. Like if it didn't sparkle, really, I didn't want it. I wouldn't do that now, exactly. I wouldn't run around town now in pants with rhinestones on the butt, like I did when I was 22. But I'd be down with some metallic accents on things, especially things like shoes and bags, accessories. It's fun. Maybe even a pair of sweats to wear around the house, just around the house. Next are giant fake diamond stud earrings. I'm actually wearing a pair right now. I put them on for a 2008 video last week and I never took them off. I'm gonna rock them again. We all needed a little fake luxury in the post 2008 financial crisis recession core era of the late 2000s. And honestly, with eggs costing as much as a mortgage payment, I'd say that we could use that now too, the hair poof. I'm not saying I'd use a bump it anymore, but pinning my bangs back into a perfect poof was not only the most satisfying feeling on the planet, but it was also just a very easy hairstyle that always looked put together and always looked cute. Hair wash day, didn't matter. You pin it back in the poof. And now very importantly, for the things that I will not be adopting ever, ever again. Number one, the giant chunky waist belts. I actually think we're in grave danger of these things coming back. <laughs> I think it is only a matter of time. And to be clear, I do think a waist belt can be done in a way that looks very chic and very classic and it helps define your waist and it can be really flattering. But those like chunky, shiny plastic, like stretchy, all the wet seal varieties of the waist belt, those need to stay buried in the past literally forever. Bodycon skirts and bodycon dresses, just bodycon in general. When I see a bodycon dress now, and it's always the certain one. You guys know the one. It's that two-toned Hervé knockoff that we all had from like BB. That dress gives me hives, you guys. I can instantly taste the watered down vodka cranberry, the gold schlager shots. I can smell like the stale beer on the floor. It's just, it's not a time I wanna to return to. And also, I have just aged out of ever wearing anything that tight ever again. Gen Z, your time to shine, but I'm gonna sit this one out if it comes back. Super dark fake tans. I like to think, I hope 
to think that we have learned our lesson on this, but you just never know. So I got to say, I fake baked and, and spray tanned so much in college. It is truly horrifying. I cannot believe that I thought that this looked good. There's this one time that I always think of. I went to the pool all day. I got super sunburned. I was out all day and I had somewhere to go. It was like a concert or something. So I didn't want to look sunburned. Like I didn't want to look red in my cute outfit, whatever it was. So I decided to try to cover up the sunburn by getting the darkest spray tan that my tanning salon offered. <gasps> you guys, I looked like I rolled around in, in barbecue sauce <laughs> because you could see the, the burn underneath the super dark spray tan. And of course, because the spray tan was so dark and so unnatural on my skin tone it was all splotchy around my ankles and my wrists oh my god it was it was so bad that entire time was just so extreme everything was extreme the styles were so extreme let's just please not go back and finally perhaps the most important trend that i never want to see again the duck nails uh, i'm not even sure what to say even at the time, I think I knew that these were hideous. I actually never got them. But I think I, I think I knew that they were ugly even at the time. And I'm proud of that, actually. I participated in a lot of extremely, extremely questionable trends. But these, they looked like shovels on the end of your fingers. How do you do anything? How do you put your contacts in with a miniature shovel on the end of, of your finger? I've actually seen people say that they're coming back or they are back. Thankfully, I have not seen them in the wild. But mark my words, if and when I do, I will run, <laughs> run the other way. I'm not here to tell you what to do. But if you happen to be younger and you happen to be listening to this and, and maybe you're thinking the duck nails maybe could be cute. Listen to me, your elder, no. Don't do it. But of course, as I mentioned last week, every trend that comes back, whether it's these trends or something else, will always come back with a twist, right? It's never gonna look exactly the same as when we wore it, just like it didn't look the same when we wore it as when our parents wore it. And so the cycle continues. But I do appreciate the mixing and matching of these trends and these decades and kind of like the time periods that these outfits and styles are coming from because it gives us us elders a fresh perspective on these things that to us feel very old and they can be new again i really truly do enjoy seeing these things again it's a really fun experiment to take something that i remember wearing and wear it now in this very different time in my life and obviously i'm gonna wear it differently i'm, I'm really curious to see what you guys think because everybody has differing opinions on this obviously and it seems to be very split people love it or they hate it so i'm curious to know what you guys think as always thank you so much for joining me for these fun conversations these journeys journeys through time if you enjoyed this episode please share it with a friend who might also like it and don't forget to rate to review and subscribe so you don't miss an episode i will be back next week I hope everyone has a fabulous week. Thanks for joining. Bye.